What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, in this week's video, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the splitter, more specifically the two different modes that I end up using the most when working with the splitter. Okay, in order to get the splitter, I'm going to click the channel editor icon. And if you take a look up here, this is the macro controls. This is something that we went over in last week's video. But if you take a look right to the right, we have a routing tab. Now, when we click this routing tab, by default, it's empty. But if you either add a plugin or drag and drop a splitter into this section, you'll see that it immediately populates. So let's pin this. And I'm just going to close it for now because I want to talk about a couple things. First of all, let's talk about the concept of splitting or multing channels with respect to mixing. So if you're just starting out or even if you've been doing this for a while, I'm sure that you have heard of the concept of parallel processing or parallel compression, parallel distortion, things like that. This is a very common concept that's used when mixing. And the idea is that you have a dry track and then you want to actually blend that with something that's been processed. And in most cases, not all, but most cases, this is usually something that's been done kind of aggressively or more aggressively than if I was to just put a plugin or uh, processing directly on the track. So in order to kind of demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is let's create a bus channel. Now I'm going to change my console view so we have a little bit more real estate to work with. So the idea would be that I would take a send from one track and I would send that to a bus. And I could make this pre-fader and send that out at unity gain. Now on the actual bus channel, I want to take something. In this case, we could say, um, let's go with a CLA 76. And I want to apply some aggressive processing. So I'm going to dial this up. Let's go with Bluey. And now if we were to listen to this. So we have a lot of compression that's happening here. I could drive this further if I wanted. But if I listen to the original track, obviously if I listen to them together, Now that's a huge difference. Now the whole concept is that you want to blend this to taste. So there it is dry. And notice as we start to tuck this in underneath, we have all the dynamics and the punch from the original unprocessed or uncompressed signal. And we have all the grit, attitude and vibe from the compression. This is a really amazing mix technique. And when I started using this, uh, it completely changed the way I started to work and the way I approached mixing in general. That being said, uh, this requires a lot of setup. It's easy to do in Studio One, but still you have to create uh, your bus channels or your effects returns. You have to create your sends. You have to dial things in. You always have to worry about your whole blend changing the minute you start adjusting a dry signal, unless you have things set up a certain way. So there's a lot to take into consideration when dealing with this type of workflow. This is where the splitter comes in handy. So let's go back to our routing tab for a moment and let's talk about these three different split modes, but I really only want to focus on two. The first mode is normal. Normal is essentially a parallel split. And this is doing pretty much exactly what I've done here manually in terms of creating a send and creating a bus return. Now I can have up to five. So this would be the same as me having my original track and then creating four sends. And then essentially I could apply different processing on up to five splits. Let's go back to two. It's a little bit more easy to understand everything with respect to working with two channels. So the parallel mode, we essentially are looking at two different branches of our track, which in this case is a stereo track. Now what I want to do is I'm going to drag the CLA 76. I'm going to drag it right here. Now what we have, if we click the splitter again, is we have our original unprocessed track that's coming through here. You can kind of see this an indication of the signal flow and we have a fader that we can adjust. And then we have our parallel chain is going through a CLA 76 and we can open this up so that we can see the GUI. And then the cool thing is we have another fader over here, which is essentially the same as us blending this return level. And this fader over here, will affect the dry signal. And then these both get sent or summed to this. And then we have one master fader, which affects them all. What the great thing is that they always maintain the relative relationship that you've set up with each other. So if I was to listen to this now, let's just command click this to reset this to zero. Um, in fact, 
Here's another tip. We can essentially mute any one of these branches. In this case, we just have two streams. I can mute by clicking here, and also if you click directly within the GUI, it's kind of hard to note unless you know exactly where to click, but this is something that we can do here as well. So to start off with, I'm going to take this and drop it all the way down, which is the same as dragging this fader that pops out, and it, let's blend this into taste. Okay, so now we have essentially done what we did here, but we've done it directly within the channel insert itself. And then we have the ability to adjust the overall level of this whole signal chain within here. I can cut off the parallel compression. There it is dry. Okay, I wanna really quickly go over the channel split. For me, I don't really use this. I suppose it could be used to adjust the panning of something if you needed you know, a certain type of control and you didn't want to use the balance slider. I've, I've used it a couple times simply to take a mono track, convert it to stereo, and then apply a slight delay to one of them, so essentially giving me a Haas effect. But if we take a look at this in this context, we'll just remember minus, minus 3.1. We could essentially adjust the left and right balance of any of these tracks over here. And of course, if they were both at Unity Gain, another thing that we could do is I could mute the right stream or the left stream. And we could do that here as well by disconnecting. So that's the channel split. Now lastly, the frequency split is something completely different. So in this case, we're only seeing two splits, but let's up the amount of splits. So for example, I'm gonna go to three splits. Now, the minute I go to three splits over here, you'll see that we have these sliders and essentially what it's giving us is information in terms of a value on the, on the frequency spectrum. So let's use the trick that we know where we can essentially mute the different branches by simply clicking here to mute the output. This is split into three. We've got our CLA 76 on here, but it's not doing anything. It's actually deactivated. So we don't have to worry about that processing having any effect on things. Let's take a look at why you might consider splitting a frequency. Well, first of all, what does a frequency split mean? It means that essentially you're melting out a channel and then it would be the same as filtering out anything that you don't want. So maybe you might wanna have the low end of your channel like this and you would choose a crossover point. And then maybe you want, might wanna have the middle section. And then last but not least, you might wanna have the top end. The idea would be that you might want to process individual frequencies of this split differently. So I know there's a lot of very, very well-known and famous engineers who speak about this concept. It's not something that I do. I've experimented with it, and I guess I'm just not that good at it yet, but I have used it in a couple cases where, for example, maybe I want to have the top end of this drum loop processed with some type of transient shaper or an exciter. Maybe I want to do something different to the middle and something different to the bottom. If we take a look at these frequency points, we know that from zero to here is, for example, zero to 200 hertz, and we can mute the top two branches. This is the lowest one. Actually, you know what, let's not mute them. Let's use these sliders. The other cool thing is these sliders are available on the Studio One remote app. Okay, so there's our lowest frequency. If we wanna to listen to our middle frequency, and again, the middle frequency is between 208 and 1.69 kilohertz. So if I wanted to adjust this, I would actually adjust both of these points. So you could kind of isolate this either by muting the streams or by turning down the other ones. And then essentially the last frequency split, we know that it's from, for example, 2.08 kilohertz all the way up to 20K, for example. So once you're comfortable with these splits, then we could take a look at adding processing that would be completely different. So I want to look at maybe doing some transient shaping. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna drag the Oxford Transmod, which is one of my favorite transient shapers, and I'm gonna drag that over, and I just need to reposition it here. Now, this plugin is going to be happening 
directly on the top band of the splitter. So now I can adjust this. And of course we know we can mute the other streams. We can also adjust the level. So now I've applied a transient shaper to just the top end. And then, you know what, we already have this in place here, the CL876, so let me go to this one. And let's bring this in, and then of course, I would wanna just listen to this. And of course, we could use these faders to blend. And then if I wanted to do something completely different to the low end, I could do that as well. So maybe I wanna add an inflator. So I wanna take this and I wanna drag this over here. And in this case, I'm gonna look at the inflator and I wanna dial up the effect and I maybe I want this to be super dark and maybe I wanna mute the middle and the top. So I've disconnected both of these two streams, which could also be done this way. And now I'm just listening to the bottom end. bring these two back in, and then I wanna mix in my bottom end. So this is now a very unique concept in terms of a very unique signal chain that I've created. And I've used a frequency split to affect each one of these frequencies independently. And I've adjusted my crossover points just by dragging and dropping these. The really interesting thing is when you take into, for, for example, if I was to now split this, and maybe I want this to now be split in parallel. So we did a frequency split, and maybe I want to affect this in parallel completely different. So again, here would be my dry signal in this case. And then I want to add, I'm going to add, for example, um, let's go with, and I'll choose Oxford Dynamics. And now this, I want to apply to just one side of this split. So again, now I'm doing parallel compression on this signal chain that I've done a frequency split on. We'll go to our Oxford Dynamics, okay? So we'll go like this. Maybe I wanna be super aggressive with this. Maybe I wanna blend this now. And then last but not least, I could say to myself, okay, and I wanna put an inflator across everything in terms of the whole entire signal chain. So this is a really, really advanced signal chain that I've created. Let's go over it. I'm taking the signal, I'm splitting it three ways, this would be the equivalent of me having to create three separate sends. I'm applying a plugin to all of these. I'm offsetting the fader level to, to get a general balance between them. And then I'm essentially sending that split signal that I've malted out to three different frequencies. I'm now sending that to another splitter and I'm processing that in parallel with some aggressive compression. And then I'm taking everything and it's kind of like taking all of that and sending it to a new bus and then I'm hitting that with an Oxford inflator and I'm just basically giving it some excitement in terms of the whole signal. But I only have one channel and at the end I'm able to take all of that that's relative to each other and I'm able to bring that up or down with one fader. And if I was to take everything off. So you're able to create incredibly complex signal chains in any way that you want and really the sky's the limit here in terms of your imagination. If I have one complaint about the splitter would be that I would absolutely love to be able to right click any one of these faders and assign that to one of my macro control knobs because for example if I wanted to be able to blend you know these three levels uh, the low mids and the highs or something like that uh, if I wanted to blend anything that was in parallel or anything, I would love to be able to do this on the fader port, which would be much more intuitive to me using my faders uh, by using the macro controls. But other than that, it's a really, really powerful tool. And the great thing about it is that it keeps everything intact. You don't have to worry about creating 
crazy diverse signal chains and, and your routing and worry about phasing and how am I going to get things to work, you can do this directly within the actual channel strip. And then you have one fader and everything is balanced. And it's if though I've created multiple buses in parallel buses and then sent those and grouped those and bus those together and sent them to their own bus and everything. But it's all happening internally. And at the end of the day, I have one fader, which I can balance. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.